Spot On is supported by the Boston University Sargent College's Master of Science degree in Nutrition program. Log on to bu.edu to learn more about this fabulous nutrition graduate program. You are listening to Spot On, a health and wellness podcast that breaks through the latest media headlines to provide you with accurate and usable information that is, well, spot on, spot on to meet your needs. I am your host, Dr. Joan Salji Blake, a nutrition professor at Boston University and the author of the college textbook called Nutrition and You, which is used in colleges across the United States and abroad. Today on Spot On, um, I have been wanting to do this episode for so long. You know, is is the diet or your diet the new Botox? And I am reading more and more things about, you know, basically what you eat or you don't eat, how it might affect not only internally your health, but maybe externally your face and how you're aging. And I find this fascinating. I did dug deep, got a little bit of statistics. You know how I like to do that. And I found out that the anti-aging beauty market, the whole category, is estimated to be over $330 billion, B as in billion dollars, globally, which I find unbelievable. But then when I think about my uh, credit card, I, I think I may be funding most of that uh, category myself, or a big chunk of it, let me tell you. But I could have been all wrong about this and maybe have uh, saved a lot of money on my credit card because I am finding more and more research that is suggesting that your diet is one of the key protectors against aging. So let's go to the streets, find out how students protect their skin from Mother Nature and aging. So to take care of my skin, I will use a toner and a primer before I put on makeup to protect my skin from those unhealthy chemicals that are in different makeups. I moisturize every day and my morning moisturizer has SPF in it. Cetaphil, Cetaphil in, something like that. You know, it's that, that one bottle, that white bottle. I'm just starting to get into face masks now, which is a new exciting venture. I just moisturize in the morning and at night, and um, I just use, like, face scrubs when I shower. I'm, like, really big on exfoliating because I always feel like it makes my skin feel really soft. Um, so I like to do that, and then I'll moisturize after. Um, and I also have, like, a spot treatment that I'll use if I feel like I have, like, little blemishes. I wear a moisturizer and sunscreen every day. I wash my face with a Neutrogena face scrub once or twice a day and apply lotion on my face afterwards. So I take care of my skin just by washing it every night and then using a toner afterwards and like using a toner in the morning. I'll use SPF to protect my skin from the sun but other than that I just kind of stay hydrated. I genuinely generally don't think too much about skincare. I know that's kind of bad sometimes. I'll, I have a face wash that I'll use infrequently. Um, if I have an acne breakout or something. I try to like not use that many products just because like I feel like my skin does pretty well on its own. So I try to, you know, keep it like that. So I wanted to do this segment and I brought on the ace, the person, the doctor that has been on top of this before anybody knew about this. She knew already about the role of your diet and how an effect it can have on aging or as we like to say, anti-aging. So I am so excited to have today on Spot On, Dr. Patricia Farris. She's a doctor. She's a clinical assistant professor at Tulane University School of Medicine. She currently serves as a member of the board of directors for the Academy I'm sorry, the American Academy of Dermatology. She spent over 30 years experience in clinical practice and research, but you never know it by looking at her. We'll, we'll be putting her, her picture on the, the spot on Facebook page. And she's a leading authority and key opinion leader on cosmetic procedures, topical skin care, cosmeceuticals, which she's going to tell us about, nutrition and nutraceuticals. In fact, she is the go-to person for a lot of cosmetic and pharmaceutical companies to help guide them on their product development. So sometimes when you go on the shelf and you're buying these uh, anti-aging 
um, uh, cosmetics or creams or whatever she might have had input on that. And she's a c- consultant to companies like L'Oreal Revlon, which, of course, my whole medicine cabinet is full of those. Not only that, but she has a textbook called um, Cosmeticeuticals and Cosmetic Practice. And she wrote a book called The Sugar Detox, which actually is looking at this whole link between sugar in your diet and aging. So, Dr. Farris, thank you so much for calling in from Tulane University School of Medicine. Thank you for having me. So, I remember doing an uh, an interview with you years ago for the Boston Globe about this because I remember reading some research on this. And and when I called the American Academy of Dermatology, I said, gee, could you have an expert that I can interview? And you were it. That was it. You were the the, the go-to doctor for this. And this was many, many years ago. So can you just, you know, when I I see this numbers that, you know, this anti-aging market is billions and billions of dollars, does this surprise you? No, not at all. It's it's unbelievable, though, isn't it, how much money people are spending on products. And let me say this, the fastest growing segment, or one of the fastest growing for sure, is what we call Nutri-Cosmetics. And that means nutritional foods, beverages, and supplements that are designed to improve the way your skin looks. So don't think that the consumer is not hip to what you and I are going to talk about today. Because right. they are definitely interested in these products. Right. You know, we, I always say you are what you eat or, or, or what you don't eat, you know, and how that could be affect your heart and your blood pressure. But now we know that it has an anti-aging property. So now it actually could help you fight Mother Nature in the aging department. So this I'm thrilled about because what the heck, Dr. Farris, if I'm going to eat well to, to lower my risk for heart disease and diabetes, why don't I look good at the same time, you know? So well, Absolutely. And, you know, I think this is something that this message was lost for a long time. And I think it was partly because there was so much data with heart disease, and diabetes and metabolic syndrome and all of these illnesses that we now know, a lot of which are induced by our unfortunately horrible Western diet, right. which is loaded with fats and sugars and everything that we should not be eating. And I think that we didn't appreciate what a toll this was really taking on our skin health. And our skin beauty, for that matter. Right, right. So I think this is absolutely fascinating because now that we got the science is that, you know, you could fight these major chronic diseases with a knife and a fork, heck, why don't we fight Mother Nature and aging with the same knife and fork and plate? So let's, let's find out some more information about this. So first of all, tell me the sad, sad news about how aging affects your skin. You know, when a dermatologist looks at skin aging, we really look at it two ways. First, we look at those things that are what we call intrinsic aging. This is the aging that comes because of birthdays. You know, you can't necessarily stop this type of aging. Your skin gets thinner, it gets pale, it loses its elasticity, and it gets wrinkles that look a lot like crepe paper, these fine Mm -hmm. little wrinkles. Now, this is a very stark contrast to what we see in photo aid skin or sun damaged skin. Mm. So think of the skin on the face of somebody who perhaps has lived all their life in Miami Beach. Mm-hmm. That coarse wrinkling, the discoloration, the sort of yellowish appearance that they often have. So those are more the hallmarks of what we call photo aging. And most of what people think is aging is actually photo aging or environmental aging. Because intrinsically aged skin actually doesn't look nearly as dramatically aged as that skin that's been exposed to the environment. I might also say, Joan, that we now have a lot of data to show that, yes, ultraviolet light is a major culprit for skin aging, for skin cancer, but we also now know that pollution plays a major role in skin aging, and that's some data that's come out in the last, I would say, five to ten years. So we as dermatologists now really refer to it more as environmental aging, not just strict photo aging or sun aging. That's so interesting. That's actually so interesting. And you know, you are spot on. I hate to plug that, but I have to tell you a funny story. So, you know, I teach uh, this big nutrition class here at Boston University, and this woman came up after class to ask me a question, and she is asking me this question about, uh, she didn't understand a concept, and I'm looking at her, Dr. Farris, and basically, I'm looking at her face, and it looks like butter. 
I, I had never seen a face like this in my life. It looked like a baby's face. Like, you know that baby's, you know this, baby smooth yeah, that skin. Yeah, beautiful gorgeous. Yeah. And, I, and she's talking to me, and it's like white noise because I am not even hearing what she's saying. And I said, honey, just, I, I, just give me, I can't stop. I have never seen a face like this. I mean, you, I know you're in your 20s. And she, and she rolls her eyes, and she says to me, oh. <sighs> My mother's a dermatologist, and she <laughs> would put sunscreen on my face every time I went. And I, I, I've never seen skin like this, never. And I said, you go home, and you call your mother, and you thank your mother because it is <laughs> un. It, was it, it definitely un- pays off. It, it was unbelievable. And me, like a, a, a dummy, I, a Jersey girl, I used, I didn't want to tell you this because you're going to probably gasp, but I used to go to the Jersey Shore and put baby oil on me. Do you believe this? Look, yes, I believe it because I'm the same generation you are. So I was a baby oil and iodine girl myself. Oh, now this is, you know, this is way back. Okay. Yeah. I always say the thing that saved me is I went into dermatology and I, you know, went undercover when I was in my 20s. But we all abused our skin back in the day. I mean, that was just, you know, that was the time when people wanted to be tanned. Right. It was vogue to be tanned. So the good news is photo aging it rapidly will inc- make your skin look older. But but what happens in photo or photo aging? What can we, Tell me what's happening in the skin. So the, the real mechanism behind all skin aging is that what happens over a period of time is you lose the molecules, the collagen and the elastin molecules that really keep the skin firm. So I always tell patients, think of collagen as like the scaffolding. Mm -hmm. These are the big molecules that hold the skin up. They're in the dermis. They make up the bulk of the dermis. And then you have also scattered through the dermis, these elastin fibers, which give your skin snap. So they, Mm -hmm. you know, they help you defy gravity. They hold your skin up. And as you age, unfortunately, the accumulation of the detrimental molecules we call free radicals in the skin starts to break down the collagen and elastin fibers. And it does this because free radicals or oxidative stress upregulates something called the metalloprotease, the enzymes that break down collagen and elastin fibers. So the whole aging process, and you remember back to the, uh, the theory of aging, the oxidative stress theories of aging, the more oxidative stress, the more of these bad molecules you have building up in the skin, the more the skin ages and the more quickly it ages. So when we expose the skin to sun exposure, that really, really turns on oxidative stress. Now, we have some oxidative stress just intrinsically. As you get older, you, you, you lose your antioxidant defense. So those free radicals, unstable oxygen molecules start to build up. But absolutely, photoaging as well as pollution puts that into overdrive. And that's really what's going on. And, you know, there's other things you talked about in the environment uh, uh, that can also cause these free radicals, like smoking, right? Oh, smoking, absolutely. We can tell smokers when they walk in the room. They have a, their, their skin is a different color. They've got wrinkles in places people don't get wrinkles. Mm. So that, the, the, you are 100%. It's not just because of the smoke itself. It's what the smoke is doing to the skin. Right. It's not just that they're pursing the cigarette. It's what that smoke is doing. Breaks down collagen and elastin molecules very quickly. And a poor diet, same way. I mean, if you well, really have a very, very poor, and we see this when, we, you know, in patients in the hospital, they're malnourished. Uh, their skin just looks, you know, horrific. So we know that Mother Nature is not nice, So and she's going to fight us, but Roy can fight her back. So... Tell me how a healthy diet, what's the research? How has it been associated with better skin aging and how you look in the mirror? You know, I, I always tell people, first of all, when we talk about studies, it's very hard to do interventional studies on nutrition, as you know mm-hmm. better than anybody. Most of the studies we do look back. So they'll look at a patient, assess the degree of aging, how deep are the wrinkles, how dry is the skin, and then they take a history. Mm -hmm. What kind of a diet has this patient had? So we can gain good information from that. Looking back, we call those retrospective Mm -hmm. studies. What we know is that wrinkling per se is definitely associated with higher intakes of sugar, Mm -hmm. eating more meat, more dairy, and less wrinkles we see in patients who have healthier diets, Mm -hmm. more veggies, more things, good, healthy uh, essential fatty acids like linoleic acid, more fish, so good fish oils with omega-3s, and then with more legumes. And this was a big study that came out several years ago. They looked at 450-some patients, and they assessed their degree of aging. And so, you know, it makes sense, just as we've said, 
the better you eat, the healthier you are, those nutrients get absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. They go to all the organs, but many of them get deposited into the skin. Mm -hmm. And this is where it comes in about antioxidants. So I mentioned already free radicals and oxidative stress. Well, how does our body fight that? Well, every day your body has antioxidants to fight free radicals and oxidative stress. The big ones are vitamin C, vitamin E, coenzyme Q10. These are many of these things we get nutritionally, right? Right. We can't make vitamin C. We've got to get it from vegetables Mm -hmm. and citrus. So we have got to have a nutritional diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables so that we can bolster our intrinsic antioxidant defense against oxidative stress. And if you don't eat fruits and vegetables, your antioxidant levels over a period of your your lifetime goes down dramatically. If you're not infusing your body with good, healthy, colorful fruits and vegetables, you're not going to bolster your antioxidant defense. And you're not going to fight the free radicals that are breaking the collagen and elastin molecules down. It's that, just that simple, Joan. That that's so interesting. So in other words, you know that produce aisle is you know you're talking about the beauty aisle where all the moisturizers, the creams, and all these antioxidants that are in topical creams. We'll get to that in a second. But really, the beauty aisle is over in the produce aisle. Absolutely, and 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 if you want to really make your skin age on overdrive then drive through the center aisles of your grocery store where you've got all the packaged foods that are full of sugars and, you know, all of that stuff that comes in a bag. Don't eat that. I mean, there's nothing, you know, bags and bottles are full of sugar. You know, as well as I do, all your bottled sauces, your ketchups, all of that stuff, very high in sugars. Keeping yourself on the periphery of the grocery store is just like going through Sephora, okay? Think about it that way. That's the Sephora of the grocery store, where all the great products are, where all the lovely things are that can make your skin look better. Okay, so Sephora. So when we go to the produce aisle, Mike, believe we're at Sephora. But I do have to pretend tell you, like you're at Sephora. Yes, I do. I do have to tell you though that the eating the periphery of of, of the uh, grocery store does has its problems because again, the meat aisle and the bakery. I was just going to say, with the exception of the meat aisle, if you stick to the fish, and I'm a hundred percent with you, meat is the devil. I'm a hundred percent with you on that. But if you stick to the fish, the periphery is a better place to be in the center. Right. I'll say that. Right. But I don't disagree with you. You know, we don't like people eating a lot of butter or eating, you know, high high dairy um, diets because those have been associated not only with ex- aging, but also can be associated with acne. Sure. You know, I have to tell you that, you know, I'm Italian, so I eat anything that's not moving. And so, you know, I love all kinds of foods. I actually love red meat, but I know lean red meats, but I do exactly what you just did. It's a small amount, and that plate is loaded with vegetables. I mean loaded with vegetables. So again, you can have small amounts, lean amounts, but you want to make sure they don't overtake the plate because the fruits and vegetables is really the beauty from within. This sugar thing is interesting. So what, tell me the interaction between a a high sugary diet and how it, it can affect your skin. Uh, it, it, this is, was really the crux of why I wrote the sugar detox. We we now know when you eat excessive amounts of sugar, you know, it makes you ill, obviously. You know, we know it increases your risk of diabetes, high mm-hmm. blood pressure, metabolic syndrome, mm-hmm. all of these terrible mm-hmm. things. But the excess sugar goes one of two places. It either can get metabolized or it actually gets bound to various protein molecules in mm-hmm. the skin. And one of the or two of those protein molecules that – love to bind sugars are collagen and elastin. And when they're bound up like this, we call those advanced glycation end products or ages. What a great name because they make you age on overdrive. These advanced glycation end products, these bound up molecules, these collagen elastin molecules that are bound with sugar are stiff. They're rigid. They lose their mechanical properties so they don't hold the skin up tight. We call it sugar slack. You know, it's, Your skin is just dysfunctional. These molecules don't work anymore. And unfortunately, once they're glycated, and that's what we call that process when they pick up a sugar molecule, they can't be fixed. (sighs) So you've got all these glycated collagen molecules and elastin molecules that basically are dysfunctional. And this is a huge problem. They don't come out of the skin easily, and you can't repair them. So that's interesting. So like a lifetime of having a high, high sugary diet 
And let's face it, if you're having a high sugary diet, that you're 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 less likely to be eating the antioxidant fruits and vegetables. So then you probably oh. have a double whammy going on there. A- absolutely. Now it's important to say that you know I, I always tell people we always want to give hope. If you eat a lot of antioxidants, especially the polyphenol antioxidants, which are in our fruits and vegetables, mm-hmm. some of those are anti-glycating. So they oh. can actually prevent glycation, especially things like spices, like thyme, uh, grapes, resveratrol is a great mm-hmm. antioxidant, blueberry extract. Uh-huh. Um, blueberries has a lot of antioxidant polyphenol in it. So there's pomegranates. There's lots of fruits and vegetables that can actually inhibit glycation. So there's this yin and yang always between the good stuff and the bad stuff. So I tell people, you know, if you eat a little bit of the good stuff, a little bit of the bad stuff, it's okay because you can, like you mentioned with the meat, you can supersede it by eating a lot of the good stuff. Right. Okay, now you say polyphenols. What about red wine? Well, you know, resveratrol has been touted as being sort of an uh, anti-aging molecule forever. Mm. And it's a fascinating molecule because it is a polyphenol, just for the record. It's also a phytoestrogen, so it's got mm. a, a, a structure that looks similar to an estrogenic molecule. It's mm. what we call a spill bean. So it has some maybe mild es- of phytoestrogenic effects. And then it also not only acts as an antioxidant in and of itself, but it boosts your own body's enzymatic antioxidants. Mm. I wrote a paper on resveratrol a couple of years ago with one of the cosmetic companies I was working with. And it was a fascinating, and it was actually for a topical product in this case, but it was fascinating how many functions resveratrol has and how it's able to boost your intrinsic antioxidant defense system. It actually is a fascinating molecule. Now, alcohol in and of itself is not so great for your antioxidants, but when you throw resveratrol in there, as you have in grapes with red wine, um, it's again, we're counteracting a little bit of the bad with a lot of the good. Right. So in the sugar detox, we actually allowed people to have a little bit of red wine right. because we felt the good kind of outweighed right. the bad there. Right. But if you're drinking a, a bottle of red wine, which you know, know is ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. You, shouldn't you, be that. You, you've lost it there. So again, just a little bit. And you know, grapes are great. I mean, so when you think yeah, about it, because the polyphenols right in the skin there, and if you eat the whole grapes, that's a, a great way to... Yeah, they're, eat, they're so good for yeah, you. They are fabulous. They're so good for you. You said something about linoleic acid. Could you talk what that is to help us out here? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we talk about the good fats and the bad fats, and, and linoleic acid is one of the good fats. And, you know, we know that eating uh, diets that are very low in healthy fats, patients will get dermatitis. They get dry skin. They get patchy skin. So, you know, we ran away from fats. I mean, you and I are old enough to remember how we pushed people away from fats, Mm -hmm. and we told them fats were bad. But these are the good fats, the omega-3s and the omega-6s. And linoleic acid is very important for skin hydration and moisturization. Mm -hmm. And without it, quite frankly, you don't make ceramides. Ceramides are part of the natural moisturizing compounds that you see in the skin. So some of these studies I told you about, these retrospective studies, have looked back and found that if you eat a good diet that's with a lot of linoleic acid, in, your skin will be less dry, mm. and it will be less sort of thin as you age. So we know that these, we call them essential fatty acids for a reason. Right. We have to take these in into our diet. That's right. They are essential fatty acids, and you can find them like in soybean and canola oils and nuts, which I um, love yeah. nuts. I mean, I, I never, do too. I nuts nev- are loaded with them. Right. I never leave home without them. I always have a little thing of nuts in, in my um, uh, briefcase. And so that's good. And that's a good message because, again, we got it wrong decades ago. And now we know this is essential that we have to get them. So snacking on nuts and adding a little bit of oil, uh, olive oil and canola oil to our salads. And there we go, salads. I'm pushing yeah. salads. Um, yeah, it's all you know, good. It's going to be totally good for you. And, of course, we know the omega-3s, oh, the fatty fish, and all fish have omega-3s are really super. You know, the I, I, we often hear about you got to drink water. You got to drink water. Can, what's the story with water and your face? You know, the story with water is it, it may be a little bit overplayed. Okay. I mean, first of all, water is healthy for you. It's better than drinking any, you know, drinks, or soft drinks, anything like that. So it should be our beverage of choice. Mm-hmm. But if you want to drink 10 bottles of water a day, you're probably not going to stop the aging process. Right. Okay. You know, in the hospital, when patients are dehydrated, we look at what's called their skin turgor. You know, we'll pick up their hand and see how quickly their skin snaps back on the back of their hand. That's called turgor test. Mm. And, and so we can look at the skin and tell if you're dehydrated. Mm. But we cannot 
overhydrate the skin and say, oh, wow, that skin looks so glowing because it's so hydrated. Right. Okay. So, so you, can, you can't really pump up from water. within. Is that what you're saying? No, you, you can't pump up with water. Right. Okay. You can pump up with other things, but you can't pump up with water. Okay. All right. All right. So we need to meet our needs. Obviously, you don't want to be dehydrated. So again, we want to stay our needs, but you know, don't go uh, thinking it's going to give you a, a big a beauty boost because you just need to have make sure you stay hydrated. Speaking of that, is what about coffee? You know, coffee is sort of an interesting dichotomy in dermatology. There's very good antioxidants in coffee, hmm. and they're they're potent antioxidants. The same for green tea and black tea, and mm-hmm. you know we know that these beverages are full of antioxidants. The problem with coffee is that it's got a lot of caffeine in it, and so you know we always tell patients, again, you've got to sort of balance it. I think a little bit of coffee is good, and probably a lot of coffee not so good. But there was an interesting study that you you'll find fascinating. You know, for years we've told our patients with rosacea that red flushy, blushy, mm-hmm. kind of pimply rash. Sure. We've told them, stay off of coffee. Coffee's terrible, you know, makes it worse. Well, somebody did a study where they gave people four cups of coffee a day, and lo and behold, the rosacea got better. Oh, my goodness. So, we, you know, we're scratching our heads because we've been telling people, you know, just like we did with fats, we've been telling people to stay off of coffee for years. But, you know, caffeine in and of itself is a vasoconstrictor, sure. so it closes blood vessels down. And a big part of why people with rosacea have red faces is because their vessels are open. So that was one thought. Maybe it's the, the caffeine because right. this four coffees a day, you know, cups a day was a lot. Right. And so I remember somebody interviewing me from somewhere about that study. And I said, you know, it's a very interesting study, but it doesn't help me that much as a practicing doctor because I'm never going to tell a patient, you know, go drink four cups right. of coffee a day and your face will look better because they'll get the jitters mm-hmm. and, you know, heart palpitations. I mean, that's too much caffeine to take in. Right. So sometimes, you know, some of these studies that come up with an interesting finding, but they're not all that practical. So I would say with the anti-aging realm, the antioxidants in coffee are probably beneficial. And if you have one cup a day, it's great. Don't put sugar in it. Don't put right. cream in it. And I wouldn't go with any more coffee than that because right. it's right. a negative. Right. It's, so, it's sort of like with alcohol, with the red wine, you know, a little bit. Well, don't it's, go- the, it's the same exact thing. You know, we know that alcohol in and of itself Alcoholic beverages lower your antioxidant level. That's been studied. So if you take something that has resveratrol in it, you know, it's again, it's a little bit of the good and a little bit of the bad together. Are you having trouble sleeping, focusing, or relaxing? If the answer is yes, then the TM Soft's White Noise Sleep Sounds podcast has got you covered. This hour-long podcast is made to help you get rid of distractions, reduce stress, relax, and most importantly, get better sleep. You can listen to sounds of nature, white noise, relaxing music, and much, much more. You can check out the TM Soft's White Noise Sleep Sounds podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. I, I showed this picture in class, and the UK did this uh, wonderful uh, uh, Alcohol Abuse Awareness Week. And what they did, which I, I thought was fascinating, Dr. Ferris, is they took a model and they made her up to look like someone who abuses alcohol. And they they cosmetically changed her. And you, you saw like these uh, uh, dark uh, spots on her face, the, the dark rings under her eyes. It was fascinating because you know you 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 talk about people say oh you you don't abuse alcohol for so many so many reasons that we all know of but the, it was interesting how they used the cosmetic approach to yeah, what an excessive abuse of alcohol and how it, it really affect the aging process it was really really fascinating yeah and, and it does it it puts it into overdrive for sure and it's so bad for you for so many reasons cancer breast cancer colon right. cancer we right. could talk about that for two hours that's a whole nother segment whole uh, nother segment a, so so what i'm hearing from you is that if we have a diet that you know here we go again we're, we're back you know i'm italian so we're going back to the mediterranean we have the med- fabulous mediterranean diet which is exactly what you say more fruits and vegetables and whole grains yeah. and, 
and and healthy oils and nuts and fish, um, and, you know, and and in the right proportion where there's a lot of vegetables and fruits uh, in the diet, seems like it's healthy inside and healthy outside. So tell me about, you know, this this. External, like I often see that you can buy products with vitamin C. You said that was a wonderful antioxidant and vitamin E in it. So, do if I if I put these on my skin, are they going to be absorbed like I'm eating oranges for vitamin C or wheat germ and nuts for vitamin E? Tell tell me about that. Well, you know, I always say as dermatologists, we're really blessed because our organ is on the outside. Mm -hmm. So, you know. The the liver doctor doesn't have that advantage. The kidney guy doesn't have that advantage. But as dermatologists, we get a lot of good things into the skin by percutaneous absorption. Mm. So you know there's very effective vitamin C products, and most skincare products contain a little bit of vitamin E and a little bit of vitamin C in them. Um, There are molecules that can't get through the skin, so I need to say collagen, for example. You don't get all these collagen creams. Collagen's a monster molecule. You know, the skin is very good. Joan at doing what it's supposed to do, and that is keeping things out. We call that the epidermal barrier, mm-hmm. barrier function. Mm-hmm. And your skin is a master at it. It's like your shrink wrap around mm-hmm. your body. Mm-hmm. You don't want bacteria coming in. You don't want bad chemicals coming in. Mm-hmm. So you're shrink wrapped in the skin. Mm-hmm. And your skin is good at keeping things out. This is the challenge that a formulator faces. And this is why I love my work with cosmetic companies. Because these formulators are so smart. And they figure out how to take molecules and get them through the skin. They use delivery systems to get them through the skin. But things like vitamin C definitely go through the skin, vitamin E. Um, you know, there's all kinds of molecules. Peptides, you know, you hear us talk about peptides a lot. These are little, you know, tiny amino acid fragments that can turn on collagen production. So, yeah, we can't rub collagen cream on and push it in. It's too big. But we can add peptides to your skin that go down to the fibroblast, the, the um, cells that turn on collagen production, and we can tell those cells, hey, Make more collagen. So, so now there's it, lots of ways to do it. Okay. Now the collagen, because because there are two things I'm seeing in the whole collagen market, is that you can you know I see creams that have collagen in it, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, collagen powders and products where you consume it. And collagen, just uh, uh, for the audience here, is you know it's a protein. It's the biggest protein in your body. And when you digest a protein, you break it down, you digest it into a little amino acids. But what appears what they have done is hydro, hydro, hydrolyze the collagen hydrolyzed. so that yep. it, it goes into these peptides, which is like two amino acids, that can be absorbed because of the way that they've been formulated. And I'm reading that this absorption of this can trigger the, you know, the increasing uh, or motivating of, of collagen in the body. So does that work? I mean, it is the collagen powders that are, have this been specially treated? If we consume them, will they be beneficial in, you know, stimulating collagen? So there, there are some studies that demonstrate that ingesting hydrolyzed collagen can turn on collagen production in the skin. Mm. Um, you're 100% right in your description of them. They, they take these collagens and they break them into little tiny two and three peptide, two and three amino acid mm. fragments, so dipeptides and tripeptides. The studies have been done. They definitely get absorbed. They've radio-labeled them and looked at them in the blood, so they definitely get absorbed. Some of them do get deposited in the skin. They go other places, too, mm-hmm. but they get deposited in the skin. But it's, inter- it's it's important to understand that these can do a number of things. Number one, they can act as building blocks for new collagen. Mm-hmm. Number two, they can bind onto receptors on fibroblasts and turn on collagen production. Mm-hmm. So just like the peptides we're rubbing in the cream, mm-hmm. these peptides can actually make your collagen, your, your fibroblasts make more collagen. And then finally, some of these dipeptides are antioxidants so they also function as antioxidants so they can do all the same things that we've talked about protecting the skin protecting collagen uh, from oxidative stress so they function in numerous ways when they're absorbed um, you know through the gastrointestinal tract so we now as dermatologists I think have a healthy respect for hydrolyzed collagen Um, I give a little lecture on this usually at the American Academy of Dermatology and there are studies now that show it can improve skin wrinkling. Mm. They've also been looked at for cellulite. Mm. So they've improved the contour of cellulite with taking hydrolyzed collagen. They've been looked at for growing um, for brittle nails, and they seem to improve nail growth and nail strength. So don't take gelatin capsules. 
Right. You want to take the hydrolyzed collagen. Right. So just to clarify, you know, collagen, uh, it's a protein. So if you eat the steak or the fish or the chicken or the tofu, uh, you're going to get your protein needs. But that's, oh, that absolutely. protein is going to be broken down into, as amino acids, be absorbed in your body. And then those amino acids are put back together to make the protein your body needs, your hair, your skin, and whatever. But absolutely. we're saying these, these specially treated collagen um, that the, the, the come into the peptides could actually go through the gut, and then when they get into the blood and get into the body, they also can spark more collagen production. Correct. I mean, they're acting very similar to the protein that you eat, so I, I don't want to imply that they do anything necessarily different, but as you and I have talked about, you know, you're not going to load up on so much red meat and so many high collagen foods it's hard to get that much collagen right. so this is really giving you like a supercharged dose you know it's fascinating i don't know if you've been to asia but when you go to asia right. they'll have the collagen content of foods on the foods like if you go to a buffet it's crazy you know they're very interested in nutri cosmetics there they're all about the inside out approach to a- aging and thwarting off aging right. and it's just fascinating but this is really again like i told you this area of cosmetics and these 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 collagen hydrolysates are they're cosmetics they're nutri cosmetics right. this whole area is going to explode right. you just watch every major consumer company in the country and in the world is looking at this segment of the market right, right. now so that's the nutraceuticals that we were talking about correct and the nutrition that become almost like pharmaceutical beauty in, beauty be, products beauty yeah beauty nutraceuticals that become that become uh beauty from within right so but, we, we, in dermatology we like an outside in approach so the creams turning things on, but we like the inside-out approach to complement right. that. And, and I'm going to take a stab at this, but let's face it, you, you you can have all the creams and everything you want, but if your diet isn't good, I, I, you know, you got to have both coming together, right? I think, I think if you're going to put your money where your mouth is, put your money in the grocery store. Yeah, right. Put your money right. into healthy, good, nutritious foods. And the rest of it will come. Right. I mean, honestly, it's just like good health anywhere else. You know, who wasn't it Hippocrates who said, food be thy medicine? I mean, we can say, let food be thy cosmetic. Right. Like, eat healthy so that you will have that beautiful glowing skin. You know, fruits and vegetables in- improve the color of your skin. They get deposited in the skin. They're good for eye health. They're they're just fantastic. And, and again... They- you could start at any age. I mean, a Jersey girl with baby oil, and I'm, I'm on it now. But you can, <laughs> That's okay. And, the Chicago girl with baby oil is, right, is right. also on it, okay? But, but for younger audiences, you know, you know, because, you know, they, again, this billion-dollar business is, is every age group is, is buying into this. You know, Absolutely. teenagers are buying into You know what into, we call it now? What? We call it prejuvenation. Oh, so yes. for you younger people mm-hmm. who are listening, get hip now. Right. Start right. these good behaviors now because you're not going to need the Botox. You're not going to need the fillers as soon or as quickly as those who do not pay attention to what, what they're eating. And I'm not telling people, you know, you're never going to need Botox. Right. You're never going to want a laser treatment because, of course, these things have their value, and we mm-hmm. do them all day long. Mm-hmm. But if you start with the prejuvenation, and, you know, we have a lot of young women coming in with they want creams. They want, you know, to know about retinols. Mm-hmm. They want to know about vitamin Cs. And they're really, they're way ahead of the game right. from where we were. I can right. tell you that much, right. way ahead of the well, game. Well, you notice the science is in, and that's what we do. We always want to go by science. So really, what, we're, what I'm hearing from you then is we got to eat that healthy diet, that Mediterranean diet, the my plate that we're always talking about every on every episode of Spot On here. Fruits and vegetables is the new beauty cream from within, it sounds like, because they have all the antioxidants, the vitamin C and the vitamin E, so those healthy fats with linoleic acid. Um, and maybe, you know, some collagen, uh, specially treated collagen powder may actually help. But, you know, again, you're going to have something great to add to your smoothie. Right. You know, you get, you get up in the morning, you work out, you do a little smoothie, add a little collagen powder, and that's what most women do. There's drinks, there's collagen drinks and the like, but, you know, a little bit of hydrolyzed collagen. Right. Right. Can't yeah, hurt. That's right. And stop smoking. Oh, please. And sunscreen. Sunscreen is the number one thing. Pr- right. pr- protecting your skin from the sun and from the environment is really important. I mean, you Super should, important. You should see how much sunscreen I put on my face. I mean, it, it's just, it's like <laughs> unbelievable. I'm trying to I know. We all, look, we all look ridiculous. Yeah, oh. we, all, we all look ridiculous at the beach now. I mean, I, you go to a dermatology convention in Hawaii, you, you, you can't even believe what we look like. We've got hoods on. we got hats on. we got... 
long shirts on. People look at us like we're crazy people. Yeah, yeah, who are these people? Oh, it's the dermatologist yeah, it's the in town. Here again. No, they laugh. We're, we look like that on the golf course, too. It's hilarious. But <laughs> you know what? When you, all you do is cut cancer off people all day long, yeah. you know, you just go, what are we thinking? Right. Right. And, you know, we've had so many contra- – we, we need to do a sunscreen. We have had so many controversies on that. But I tell people nutrition is also sunscreen. Right. I mean, if you eat a healthy diet, that's boosting your antioxidants. Right. It's There's been studies that have shown that if you take, like, supplements with vitamin C and vitamin E, your skin sunburns less readily. Right. So it can actually increase the dose it takes to make you sunburn. Right. So we're not replacing sunscreen no. by any stretch. No. But nutrition right. plays a huge role in photo protection. Right. Right. Absolutely a huge role. I can't thank you enough because I am so excited because, you know, we're talking about the healthy diet to fight chronic diseases. And, you know, why not beauty from within and also helping you look good and you feel good and help your skin? And um, this is absolutely fabulous. And I can't wait for more and more of the science to come out because, you know, I I, use this, I always say that you fight heart disease, cancer, certain uh, uh, stroke and di- type 2 diabetes with a fork and a knife. And now I'm going to say... Anti-aging. I'm going to put that on the list. Okay. Put that on the I'm list. I'm fighting Mother got, Nature with a knife me. and a fork. Okay. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's a great message. Dr. Farris, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom on Spot On. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Spot On. Please subscribe to Spot On on your favorite podcast app for new episodes every week. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Joan Salgy Blake. And also like our Spot On Facebook page and suggest topics for future episodes. And oh, by the way, could you ask five of your friends or family members to download Spot On and subscribe to it? Do I ask a lot from you?